just like one of my children, as I say, children, um, who really taking a hold of this space. So if you have the time, get your lunch, sit down and, and join us as we begin to share on how to master this game in federal contracts. Um, Breezy, hi. Um, they are coming in um, slowly but surely. <laughs> We did have a large class today. I don't know where they where they came from, but maybe God just sprinkled some dust on and said, uh, you all need to sit in on this class. So um, I'm welcoming everyone who is joining us. Uh, Shayla, you can go ahead and let them all in. Okay. All right. Good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. Um, and we do need to make sure I'm on mute all, um, and welcome. Why don't we say 2.30 and, um, and we make the appointment at 3.00. I can't hear Ms. Paula. Ms. Paula, I can't hear you. Um, mute myself. All right. We're all good. Perfect. Uh, check, check, check. Check, check, check. Welcome, everyone, and welcome, everyone, to GPI's Masterclass. <laughs> I am so excited about today's webinar, and Ms. Breezy, uh, better known, well, Abrisha Dawson, better known as Breezy, who's going to share some of her insight on how she's been able to take this ball and run with it. But before we jump in, I like to um, just open up and get just a brief scenario on what's going on with GPI. In case you have not heard about GPI, we are your innovative solutions to government contracting. Um, we currently have cohorts that we're rolling out monthly. Our next cohort will start on Monday for the live trainings. And for those who want self-paced, that will start Friday. If you're interested, you can go to my website and you can get more details tomorrow morning as we begin to launch the next um, a batch of CEOs in this space. We also have executive coaching services. I am so excited that um, we've I've been able to pull together. Oh, I've been able to pull together uh, a team of experts. Uh, here we go again. Shayla, can you work with me on the, the mute? I'm um, mute. Labricia. Um, we have a team of um, experts who are um, now providing coaching services, some who have taken businesses from small and so helped them to be sold. I have a SBA employee who has 34 years working with participants in the 8A firm. And then I have Ms. Tucker, who's a former contract specialist, but she's also an 8A uh, company who, again, have come together to assist our community as we continue to grow and take over. Um, <clears throat> if you're here in Atlanta, tomorrow I'll be, we'll be at the new Black Wall Street doing a live presentation on how you can get into the game and begin to leverage government contracting. Um, I also have just self-published a book uh, in December. I will be signing my book at the new Black Wall Street uh, event tomorrow at four o'clock. That's in Stonecrest, Georgia. So come on out. I would love to see you get a book. And the name of the book is That's Crazy, Recognize Crazy, and Run. Also, um, I am going to um, 
I am going to let Ms. Uh, Harris, Ms. Harris, I'm going to open your mic. And if you can share a little bit about this program uh, and those who may be interested in participating, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Paula. Can you hear me? We can. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Paula. And just always extending an olive branch to help other businesses. I'm Danita Harris. I serve as a program manager for one of the Morehouse College Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center's um, programs. The program that I'm talking about is called Accelerating Growth Activators Program, AGAP. And we are now accepting applications for this program. It is a free program funded by Wells Fargo Open to Business Fund. Um, I am looking for entrepreneurs of color located in Metro Atlanta who are either interested in working in the healthcare industry and getting contracts in the healthcare industry or who already have those um, contracts but want a higher value contract. We're accepting applications through April the 4th and we would love for you to apply. I will place the link in the chat and I'm gonna turn it back over so we can get right on to Ms. Dawson. All right, thank you, Danita. Thank it's you. all about collaboration, partnership, spreading the word, word. Our goal is to make sure small businesses succeed um, in, this, in this world. Again, Please, we, love, we would love for you to join the GPI community. If you need more information, this is our phone number. And my phone number is 678-822-2303. Um, with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and jump into today's class. Um, I'd like to formally introduce Ms. Labricia Dawson. She's the CEO of Dawson Management and Consultant. Um, so thank you. Um, thank you, Labricia, for joining us. And I am so excited to be able to impart a lot of wisdom um, to this community. What I'd like to do is just Start start at the beginning. Let's let's start with your background. Where are you from? How did you get into this? And let's get a little bit of your history. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much, Ms. Paula, for asking me to speak today. And I thank you all so much for joining us today. So my name is Ms. Dawson. I am the owner of Dawson's Realty and Mortgages, DBA Dawson's Management. I reside here in Atlanta, Georgia, and that's where I am from. And I've been here my entire life. So I'm a Southern Belle. So Ms. Paula, how I got started, um, I used to be a car salesman, believe it or not. And one day this gentleman walks in, he was like, well, what are you doing working here? I'm like, well, what does that mean? And he just equated being a car salesman with someone sleazy. And I didn't want that attached to me. And another gentleman came in and said, well, you should try real estate. And it was just like God sending people to me to try a new journey. And I went to real estate school and about three years in, I became a broker and I could not wait uh, after I got my license to open up my own firm. Can you hear me? Well, we can. And, and, and let me back up just a little bit, even me meeting you, okay. um, Breezy. When I met you, um, that was when I first arrived here in Atlanta at the SBA office. And I like to say, I, I believe I met every real estate agent <laughs> here in Atlanta that okay. was going after that hood asset contract. Okay. So um, I, I, I let me openly, publicly uh, tell you how proud I am and how you've grown this business. I've watched you from the sideline and all of you all seem like my children. Now the children are grown up and and you are flourishing. So go ahead and continue with the story, please. Yes, ma'am. And what year was that when you were at the SBA? 2012. I, I relocated here to the Atlanta office in 2012. 
Absolutely. So that, Miss Paula, um, I started off in real estate kind of doing REO properties. Most of the brokers on here know that there's um, REO when something forecloses, we sell those properties. So I was never really a traditional broker. And um, in Gwinnett County, I would go and do like BPOs and I would always see the same person's sign in the yard and me being my inquisitive self. I'm like, well, I want my signs in the yard too. So I figured out, okay, how are they getting all these listings selling two and 300 houses a year? Mm -hmm. I figured it out and I became a local listing broker. I would attend a lot of the conferences. Most of the, the people on this call too, probably I've met at some of the conferences, just going out, educating myself. And so it wasn't long before I said, I'm going to figure this out. So I was able to start getting those listings as a local listing broker. And one year the light bulb came on. We would go to the SBA to see Miss Paula. And once I got a 1099 from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, I was like, wait a minute, but I'm, I'm working for an asset management company. Why did my 1099 come from HUD? Mm -hmm. Once I realized that I was working for a federal agency as a subcontractor, although I was a local listing broker, I just started connecting the dots. From there, and we would all go see Miss Paula at the SBA. She was like, well, you have a lot more to learn. And she, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, they everybody was trying to go after these $200 million contracts. They were... I'm like, you're all not ready. You don't have the infrastructure. You don't really understand what you're getting into. Yes. So as I say, you started, um, and, and even before, once you started in this space, it wasn't necessarily with real estate because I believe early on, I was meeting with you as you was looking at teaming partners um, for janitorials and facility support. So, yes. but go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so um, one thing a person can't measure and with all due respect is desire. So although Miss Paula was telling us, right, we did not have the proper infrastructure at that time, that vision and that driving me, it can't be measured outwardly, but I know what's on the inside of me. So I went for that HUD contract back in 2013, 14. Mm. We did not win, but I had enough faith in me to say, I'm going to go for it anyway, because I'm, I'm doing the properties anyway. But little did I know being a local listing broker is not the same equipment is being an asset management company. So Ms. Mm. Paula is right. So that baby didn't die because I didn't get the HUD contract 10 years ago. So what was the difference between, you just said something key, what was the difference between a listing and asset management for those who may not know that what even what asset management is? So a local listing broker, we typically work for the asset management companies. The asset mm -hmm. management company pretty much work for like your HUDs and your VAs and your GSEs, Fannie, Freddie. Um, there are all these bigger players. Asset managers typically go and get the bigger contracts. People like the agents, we go and try to get with the um, asset managers. But I want to go ahead. And the asset managers are the ones that awarded contracts from the federal government to manage their housing inventory. Correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It could be a federal agency or a GSE, a Freddie Fannie, you know what I'm saying? So it's the mm -hmm. bigger contracts that people like agents wouldn't even think that they could do. But mm -hmm. you taught us, Ms. Paula, you're doing the work anyway. We're putting contracts mm -hmm. together anyway. We're uh, brokers. We're facilitating these deals. So most real estate agents understand how to put the peanut butter and jelly together to make a sandwich. So <laughs> that, that doesn't go away. And we know how to do this. But the other key thing was getting those certifications. So now I got the skill set, the knowledge, but not necessarily the uh, infrastructure. So all of the training from Ms. Paula, from SBA, from Goldman Sachs, if you have a desire, you can do it. Just go out and get the proper training so that it, it becomes real. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, I, and I agree. You, 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 I watched all of you all. You all came in at around the same time. And and you all definitely are hard workers. But what I was trying to get everyone to understand is uh, I think those that are in the real estate industry just look at just, I'm just an agent or I'm just a broker. But the task that you have to, uh, that requires you to sell that property is much more than an agent. So you have to think outside of the box in this space and your project management. That's all you're doing when you're selling anything. Am I correct, Labricia? You are absolutely correct. And with that mindset, you have to program yourself because when, when I got the 8A certification, to me, I still was not 
mentally in my mind, I know that I can do this, but attending industry days and responding to um, opportunities in my mind, I'm still in my mind, a real estate broker. Mm-hmm. As soon as I stopped thinking, mm-hmm. you're just a real estate broker. It clicked for me. Today, mm-hmm. we have over five federal contracts with five different federal agencies. Mm-hmm. The USDA is just one of many that we have. Mm. And that's because I don't look at myself as a real estate broker. I, that's one vertical of my company that I do. So what what ma- what was it that made the clip? What what was it that finally said, yes, I, I'm not more than just what that name or position is saying? Yeah, just a, like classes like yourself. You teach us, you're a you're a consultant, you're not this. Like, don't just go after what you can do. Like you always talk about, um, I think you were an event planner. You didn't necessarily go set up the tables yourself, but you knew how to hire people that set up the tables. So with us, it's just staffing, brokering. And if you look at it differently, you know that you're just staffing these contracts for the government. So it's no different. Absolutely. And I think that's the biggest challenge. So when you first entered into this space, um, what was your first contract? Was it through the 8A or as a small business? The first contract was through, it was an 8A sole source award. And that came from us attending an industry day with an agency. And the follow-up game is very real. Most real estate agents, we have the follow-up game on lock. So taking that same skill set, I met a gentleman there who was telling us, mm-hmm. everybody who attended, when our um, budget comes out next year, I'm going to reach back out to you. Well, you can't just tell me you're going to reach back out to me. I'm going to reach out to you, too, every 30 days. And I reached out to him every 30 days for about six months. And lo and behold, that was our first contract. And I literally wept. It was just so amazing that all the knowledge comes together and it's real. So, yeah. It is. It is. It is. real. Did you take a picture of that first check? Oh, yes. I got everything on my wall. The check check was on the visionary board before the check manifested. You got to see it before you see it. I saw myself, I already have on my wall 100 million plus dollars in federal contracts. And I don't think that you're going to get that just being a regular agent. And I just want my broker agent community. I am you. So just start thinking outside the box using those same skill sets to grow up to something much bigger. Yeah. And what I found, and I will consistently say, because you know, I've been playing with your industry for the, since I got here in Atlanta and understanding your industry. Um, you all, once that light bulb hit, hit or comes on, you tend to do the best. Yes. Um, because you're used to the contracts. You're, you all are, are really the agents to a certain degree, I say it's crumb Jason and to a certain degree because that people don't understand. They think you're making a lot of money, but the 3% commission or the 3% that you get as the broker it's eating into your salary, your overhead and everything. So in this space, you don't have to have those challenges. Am I correct, uh, you are, Labricia? You're very correct. And it, it, I just would have to say, it has just been a tremendous journey. Everything that you learn, you're gonna need it over here in this, in this space. Like you also spoke about when you get the contract, how are you going to fund that contract? So my mind is already ready for my first contract. What are you gonna do about paying your people? So now you taught us about the now account. You taught us about having your lines of credit, getting your credit straight. All of just the common sense things, I kind of learned them before I got a contract. I started saving my money back then because I knew that I was gonna have contracts. Mm-hmm. Um. So as a small business entering in this, and what year did you say that you really started focusing on government contract? What year was that? You mean after I got my 8A or before? Before. Before oh, the 8A, the, before 2012, any once I figured out my, my that 1099 came from HUD, I was like, wow, it, that's what made it click for me. Okay. And so what year did you win your first very first contract? Because you you got your 8A before you won your first contract, or did you win any contracts before you won the 8A certificate? I mean, before you got into the 8A program. I got in the 8A program in 2017, and I got awarded that FEMA contract in 2017. It was a BPA. Remember? I remember that. Yes, that and I was, was so uh, scared. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain that one, what that one was? That one was actually real estate services. So there were wildfires out in California and they needed a real estate company to assist the people with finding housing. So there are perfect niches in the space 
that do what we do. We just have to learn how to get the certifications and write to what they're asking us for. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same exact thing with the USDA contract. It's what I do every day already. So it just made sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 I say that's one vertical. Um, the, let's go back to the USDA. I love the USDA contract. Um, did you, were you able to use some of the same information that you used when you submitted for the HUD asset and, and not necessarily have to start from scratch? Let's just, because, because a contract of that size, um, it takes time. You're not just going to start, go see it and, and compete. Right. You, you've got to have pre-preparation before you start putting yourself out there. So what was that like? Absolutely. So I was able to use some of the things I had written to 10 years before. And plus, mm -hmm. because I do it every day, it was literally the same thing that I do every day. And I'm mm -hmm. just a different type of broker. If someone sends me a property three hours away, I'm not going to turn that asset manager down. I'm going to go take that property three hours away. So in my mind, the USDA was like, do you understand what national mean? Like nationwide coverage? <laughs> to me, it was like I have broker friends all over the country because I had attended all of these uh, places and met friends everywhere. So to me, logistically, it made sense because mm -hmm. I do it anyway. And that's what I say, not outside even the real estate. Um, and I say all these associations that are um, real estate brokers, since we have a lot of real estate brokers and agents on board. If you think about it, you're constantly dealing with janitors. You're constantly dealing with landscapers or, or, or painters, roofers. That's an entry point to get in to that space. So that very first contract that you won, Labricia, what was it uh, for? What were you doing? It's an IT contract. And see, with the 8A program, I don't, I don't know anything about IT, <laughs> but that 8A certification allowed me to come in and take over. Um, it's called a follow-on contract. That person was already working there for 20 plus years, but the 8A person graduated out that agency needed a new 8A, so I just took over someone else's contract. And that's the beauty of what Ms. Paula teaches about getting these 8A certifications. Uh, and for those of you who aren't aware of what the 8A program is, it's a program that's under the Small Business Administration, and it allows um, minority-owned businesses to go to any federal agency, and they can award contracts to your business up to $4 million in any single award. Um, and it's designed to build your business. And do you feel, but you can't depend on it. I think a lot of people who are in that program think, okay, I got my 8A, mm -hmm. um, it's automatic, where are my contracts? No, they they look at you, Labricia, and they'll see the end results, right? They don't see those years before and what you were doing and all these people that you were meet, meeting with. So you've put the work in. Absolutely. Would you agree? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it has been a long journey, but I would say, please don't ever, ever give up. And it was one day like God say suddenly, but it really wasn't suddenly. It was just everything that you've done was suddenly appear, but to mm -hmm. suddenly go back 10 to 15 years. <laughs> and what would you recommend for those who are thinking about getting into this space, what would be the first step that you would tell them outside of coming to GPI's training program? Because you, you were almost like Stacy. Um, I met you when I was still working at SBA and I didn't, I didn't have the necessary infrastructure that I have now. And you've been with me <laughs> since I left SBA, mm -hmm. but um, my goal was to eliminate the learning curve. Mm. And what happens a lot of times when people are working with SBA and their partners, it's uh, information based. Mm. No one was teaching you guys the process. So that's why it makes sense for me to lead and create a system and process. Mm -hmm. You as agents and brokers, based on what you're doing, you have to have systems and processes in place, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what I would tell people, your class did for me, make it all kind of quick as well. 
you could get all the information you want to. I can read until my, my eyes are dry. But if I don't know how to implement or execute what you've told me, and you brought real live people in, I never forget we came to your class. There was a lady there. She had a contract with the federal penitentiary. Remember cutting hair. She was mm. a she she got a barbering contract at the penitentiary. She didn't know how to cut hair. She had never been to beauty school, but she went and hired a barber sub with him. And they sell socks at these jails. So you it's just so many opportunities in the federal space. And I can say this, I consider myself a successful broker. I've been doing it for a while, but I've not made the money that I make now in, on this mm-hmm. side being a real estate broker, riding around mm-hmm. my gas. And I've just not, and it's every month, same, you do one thing one time and it pretty much, it, you get a check every month, every month. Mm-hmm. And on a USDA contract, that's totally different how it's set up. It's just a big blessing. So basically I don't get paid every month. I get paid as a master REO broker around the country every time something sells, Dawson's management. <laughs> so that is bigger than like, it, it's just, it's a blessing. And I think even from that end of it, um, changing your name, and that's what I was telling people who are entering into this space. You don't want to um, pigeonhole yourself. So you heard her state her legal name, but to the government, what is your name? Dawson's Management. Um, so now it, she's able to incorporate so much more and have multiple uh, revenue streams. And so what I find with the real estate agents, you guys are very competitive. But in this space, the government encourages collaboration. And that's why I say the power of you, all of your organizations, because you're national. So if you're here in Georgia and you see um, a, you, you need a project manager or a construction manager in Tucson, you can reach out to some of your associates to see who's in that space. And that's what makes sense to me. Yes. And is that how you've been able to leverage and even staff? Let's let's go back to even the USDA contract. So that contract, um, what's the manpower like? How did you even begin to staff it? Um, What are some hurdles? What are some challenges that you would recommend others should think about that they don't have to go through that same fire with? So again, Ms. Paula, the USDA contract, because it's what I do so easily every day. I love being an REO broker. So the broker network is the largest push because if the USDA sends me a property in Puerto Rico, I need to have brokers in Puerto Rico ready to go. When I send them that listing, they have to be ready. So we do uh, training. We're training our brokers to, to make sure that they understand once I throw the ball to you, can you score the touchdown? So it's a lot of stuff like that that goes on behind the scenes. But most REO brokers, this is what we do anyway. We work a little bit harder to me than traditional brokers. We have to know how to put that deal together. Dealing with title companies, the preservation company, it's just, it's, it, to me, it was just my sweet spot. It made sense to me. So for me, it's not hard. Um, so you, you also started out working with others in teaming relationships. Do you have any um, insight you would like to share as it relates to people and and as you begin to identify certain teaming partners, what do you look for? How do you interview them? Uh, How do you know this is the right person or the right fit for me? Yes, great question. So basically I've kind of been scaling on the go. I'm a first time uh, business owner within my family. So this is way bigger than my dad is like in tears as well because it's bigger than you know, you, you have to just kind of scale it and let it grow. The USDA is a pretty big contract, but the people just came. Once you get the contracts, either they're going to already be in place or because I come from this industry, I know how to go and find the people that I need. And some things as it unfold, folded, we realized what we needed at that point. But some things you can't write to in a proposal because you don't know until it unfolds that you need that key player. So mm-hmm. uh, I can interview people all I want. Sometimes they may or may not be needed. Um, but you always want to be interviewing because when something does come up, like there's another big contract getting ready to come out and I'm getting ready to start interviewing for that. So you want to start your interview process kind of before um, and just kind of keep a little box with everyone's name in it. And that's what I've done. Um, So what type of infrastructure do you need? What type of accounting system? Because again, when you're entering into this space, 
it's a whole different space. You need to, you're more accountable. You have to have those systems in place. You have to have an accounting system that the government's going to approve and all the I's and T's across. So how long or how much time did you spend in making sure your infrastructure was in place to secure these contracts? Yes. So I, I would love to sit here and say, hey, I had all of this stuff together before I got a contract. And I'm, as I'm telling you, as we're winning contracts, I'm still building my infrastructure. The first contract I'm able to invoice because it's very simple. There's a system called WAF, uh, Wide Area Workflow. I simply go in every month and I can do that one in five minutes. He gets the same amount of money every month for the next three to four years. That's easy. The USDA contract, again, when something sells, I get a check. Uh, with the CDC contract that we have, I just found out about another system. So um, I partnered with someone. So I have six employees with the CDC. How I leverage my time now until I get all those things in place that you're talking about, I subcontracted with someone else. I gave them two of the employees. They're very versed on CDC rules and HR and stuff like that. So I let them handle that part. So until I get it all like these big companies, I just have to use what God has given me common sense. Say, hey, you're going to have to partner here until you figure it all out. And we're just scaling on the go. And again, you got a community here um, with me and family. That's what I say with GPI. All of you are my children. So we're never going to leave you out there by yourself. So it's always a phone call away. If I know, don't know someone, someone else knows someone. Um, so you have a total of how many employees? So I have about. 15 independent contractors, but employees, there are five employees. But a okay. lot of my contracts, um, I have independent contractors on there because it's janitorial and they were already in place before I even got the contract. So we use those same cleaners. And again, they get paid once a month. The same thing is just so automated over here. You get a check like this, like, like I'm in the military almost. <laughs> so uh, what made you go into janitorial? And, and again, step back. How did you win those types of contract that has nothing to do with real estate. Okay, so IT, I went to the industry day and I stalked the gentleman. And, and back, back up and explain what, for those who are not being in this space, you, you're acting like the government. We talk a language that people don't even know what even is an industry day. So okay. maybe share what that's like and how you've been able to leverage those, that, that type of um, networking to win contracts. Okay, so um, there are a lot of free resources like GTPAC, and once you sign up with Georgia Tech, you'll start to get emails based on your NAICS code, and um, I got an email from them saying that there was going to be an industry day at this particular agency, and now I go every year, and beta.sam or sam.gov, um, a lot of different agencies post their industry days where they invite the public in, whether in, um, in person or with coronavirus virtually. And I just attend everything I can, especially since COVID happened. I learned so much just sitting here. I never get tired of getting the information because you're gonna need it somewhere down the line. Ms. Paula <laughs> told us a story one time about, um, about the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the insurance, employer liability insurance. That lesson for me was something that happened to you in a negative way, but I was able to circumvent something for me because I took what you told me. So always mm -hmm. learning. Um, and industry days are days that each federal agency will set up and they invite um, con um, the buyers on the government side from that agencies. They'll invite small businesses to come in. They'll invite large prime contracting. So their goal is to make it a networking e event so that you're a exposed to opportunities that are coming out. Um, the government has goals. Every year they have to set aside a certain percentage of small businesses. And a lot of small businesses think it's just too much, too much paperwork. I can't get into this space. And to me, it's a little easier because at least you know who the players are, you know how the money is. And again, LaBricia, you've been on both sides. Would you agree? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, so how did you, what, when, when you started going to uh, those industry days, how did you begin to network? What was your strategy in participating? Were you collecting cards? What were you doing to uh, build those relationships? 
It could have been as simple as me wanting to get in to meet the gentleman that was speaking or for me to get in because I'm a new 8A, maybe someone who's graduating out of the program, looking for a mentor. So I just had a, diff a lot of different strategies for attending. I know that I'm not where I need to be. So I'm, I always need to be somewhere learning until all the information clicks for me. So I'll continue to go to industry days. I continue to write to Source of Salts. So that particularly, the first contract, industry day and I just followed up with the gentleman that told me that he was going to be awarding these contracts and and that's how I got my first one the second contract we got the janitorial contract on beta.sam or sam.gov the government puts out opportunities for people like myself to respond to hub zone 8a woman on small business miss Paula teaches you how to get all these certifications and the SBA does too and um, I, I responded to a janitorial contract with the Army Corps of Engineers and it was like four or five months later until I, until you just know what to do, just do everything until something stick. And that's just pretty much what I was doing. Lo and behold, um, I wrote that thing in like December of 2020. About three months later, Army Corps calls me. Hey, you responded to this thing. Well, I don't see any past performance on you. And you got to be quick on your feet. Now, the car salesman person came out then. Oh, <laughs> but I can get you. But I can get. And she said, well, send me what you have. And we were able to convince them to get, and that was like a right on a $3 million contract. And um, they wrote beautiful CPARs about us. Uh, a CPARs is like a report card to make sure you're doing great work. Okay. Uh, so we have a question from the audience and saying, how do, where, where do I go to find those industry days? If someone could put in acquisition.gov forward slash forecast. That's going to take you to the website that's going to identify most of the federal agencies. Each agency will have what they call a small business office. It's the Office of Small Business Disadvantaged um, Utilization. And their goal is to connect you with the plot players. Uh, if you go to their website, they'll list their industry days. HHS, Department of Health, Health and Human Services, um, D, Department of Defense. And so that is, is really is the first stage of getting into this game. Um, building relationships. It really, to me, it's not necessarily I'm submitting these bids and I'm, I'm expecting to win. I'm more, I'm looking more at building that relationship to the person that I submit the bid to. Does that make sense to you, Breezy? 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 Absolutely, it does. Yes, ma'am. And how long did it take you um, to, to begin to build that relationship? And, and folks trusting you because the government is gun shy. <laughs> they want to make sure <laughs> that whoever they give that contract to, they're not going to have headaches on. <laughs> Absolutely. This is one beautiful thing about preparation. So the first contract, Soul Source 8A. The second one, Soul Source 8A. The USDA was an open competition contract, meaning I went up against big companies that I used mm. to dream I could get up to. And it was just, I, I, like I said, it was God's timing because when we won, I was like, we beat this company? It was just like, are you serious? So the preparation, but this latest contract we just won with CDC and we just won a contract with HUD in the last two to three months. They asked me for my financials and I was so happy that I had it together. Meaning that, yes, I can get an 8 day contract sole source to me, but if your paperwork is not together, if your financials, they want to know that you can pay these people, they're entrusting you to pay the people and that the checks won't bounce. So Ms. Paula Class or SBA, GTPAC, learn about this business and get your paperwork together, your books, your taxes and all that. You, it's not because I'm just Black that I got these contracts. Yes, you can get 8 day certified, but you still have to perform. You have to have your paperwork in order. And I think for me, um, what what's my differentiator is that I've worked on both sides, um, meaning I've had a business um, and I also worked inside the federal government. And the reason I left SBA is because, again, no one was combining the two. And you have to understand the business side as well as the contracts. So. I used a lot of the templates. Did you find the templates helpful for you that you got through my program? 
Absolutely. Every year I use it again when it's time to get recertified. <laughs> <laughs> so why reinvent the wheel? Like it mm -hmm. works. And you know what? Sometimes you may say, well, somebody may say, well, I didn't get something when I went to this class. Or, uh, I didn't get this. It's not about that person making your whole life better. If it's one thing that a person can tell you, like you telling me about that liability insurance, you've taught me a lot, but I'm saying if you can get one thing from a person, they have indeed helped you. It's your job to help yourself. And Ms. Polly, you asked me about the USDA um, contract too. I have some powerful people on my team and I cannot, would not have been able to do it without them. The broker network is powerful, yes, but I have an asset manager, her name, uh, Marcia Toms, um, Reginald Screen, um, Tim Turner. Literally, we have like a skeleton crew, but with God in it, all things are possible. And when I tell you that we push and we push and we push and God manifested, we've sold right at 700 properties in less than six months. And the agency is blown away right now. They can't even believe that we're performing this well, but it's not, I don't give us the credit. It is God who put it all together. Mm -hmm. He literally whispered Marcia name to me one night I was sitting at my computer because I interviewed several asset managers, but this young lady, her name flashed across. I'm like, Marcia. And lo and behold, we've been together because she's a heavy hitter. She, she comes from this in industry. She's a subject matter expert in mm -hmm. asset management. Mm -hmm. So I knew what I knew as a local listing broker, but I don't pretend to know what she knows. Mm -hmm. I don't pretend to know what Mr. Screen knows. He's um, our business manager. So everybody stays in their lane and all of that together. Like you say, the government wants to see your team. I'm not a mm -hmm. long ranger in this. Very good. Someone asked um, if you're just starting out, how do you get, uh, and you don't have the past performance, how was you able to leverage winning those contracts without that past performance? You know what, Miss Polly, you have a little template called a capability statement. <laughs> and I just took that little capability statement. Oh, and you're able to put on your capability, your capability statement is similar to a resume. Listen, mm -hmm. I may not have had a past performance in the federal space, but I do this every day in the commercial space. So people, you have a business, whether you're selling to Ms. Paula, to the local government or to the federal government, mm -hmm. you're going to prove what you're doing every day, no matter who that client is. So I was simply able to take that capability statement right to what they were asking me. And here we go. Once you get over the fear of you can do this, that was it for me. And, and the goal is, as long in, in the government space, as long as you're able to demonstrate that you have a team of experts, that's who they're buying. Yes. It's called contingency hires. You're just trying to demonstrate to the government, we understand what you're asking for, and we have subject matter experts who are experienced in that area, and these are their resumes. Absolutely. And again, that becomes the, the shift. Because, again, people want to be in control and, and I need to know everything about that contract. That is not mm -hmm. your role as a CEO. Mm -hmm. Your role is to manage the business. Absolutely. And my, my motto I'm using this year is people, process, systems, and technology. Understanding all of that comes into play, whether you're marketing to the government or anybody. Um, so, Breezy, you had the foundation and you understood the business side, but coming into this space, it's learning a different language, but it's not. And I say that to all of those real estate agents. If you're dealing with HUD, you're dealing with contracts, if you all are having to pass these tests, it's no different in transferring those skill sets on this side. Would you agree? I absolutely agree. And it's way more lucrative on this side to take our <laughs> skill sets to someone who appreciates it because people, you can ride them around in your car all day. Oh, and you've spent a hundred dollars. Now gas is like almost $5 a gallon and uh, no inventory left. And they changed their mind. Their loan didn't go through. I'm not downplaying real estate because I still do real estate. I'm just saying to my brothers and sisters, I am you. And I just want you to expand on what you do already. That's all I'm mm -hmm. saying have a different revenue stream. There's no reason that you can't, you can't play in this space. But um, for 8A, I mean, for people who can qualify into the 8A program, they do not allow brokers into that program. So what I 
sort of kind of direct those who are interested in applying into that program. And I don't push you into that program until you're ready, yes. um, is that you need to look at your tax returns and make sure your NAICS code, that's an industry code, is not assigned with that broker code. Um, yeah. So you have any other words or wisdoms, lessons learned? What's some lessons yes. learned since you've gotten in here? Yes, ma'am. I would say when you just said that you don't push people into getting into the 8A program, it's so heavily advertised and, and it's almost like a covenant thing. But if you don't know what to do with it, if you don't have the relationships, like I was on a call the other day, there's a young lady who's been in the 8A program for five years. You only get to stay in it for nine years. She's not had one contract in five years. And it's supposed to be a tool that almost makes you a millionaire like, like this if used correctly. And if you don't have those resources readily available, that's why I'm not pushing Miss Paula class. But everybody I know who have contracts have gone through Ms. Paula. <laughs> I know a lot of yeah. people with an 8A with no contracts, but everybody who 8A and, and been through your class got contracts. And, and it's about having a, a strategy, um, not just thinking um, that certification is the all and be all. Yeah. It is. It is. I love creating millionaires. Um but you don't want to waste any time. So do you think you should would have waited before you applied into that pro program now, hindsight? Well, you know, they say hindsight is always 2020. But with mm -hmm. my little tenacious self, I wouldn't change a thing. Because guess mm -hmm. what? The flip side of it is you only got nine years and you're at year three and one and you haven't maximized it. So now it makes me now I got to do it even harder. And that's just my personality. Like you said, we're very competitive, you know, most real estate brokers. So I wouldn't change a thing, Ms. Paula. Not even mm. the no's in my life. The no's mm. have led to now. So I mm. wouldn't change a thing, no. Mm. <laughs> very good, very good, very good, very good. Um, yes, yes. So it's, 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 it's a game, but what I tell business owners, what I didn't do, there's a couple of things that I wish I would have done in that first business that would have been um, once I was at my peak, mm -hmm. buy a building. This is how we begin to create generational wealth. Absolutely. Because now you're able to leverage those contracts because in those contracts, your mortgage, your rent is paid. You're getting the government's going to reimburse you for certain costs. So now you're allowing the contracts to, in essence, pay for your building. Absolutely. Um, and again, you still, I think people, we don't necessarily try to pull people from the real estate because again, you all are such a value, especially for the minority owned community uh, and being our advocate. But I want you to think of it a little bit differently. If you're now able to win federal contracts and you're now able to employ people and pay them a salary and benefits. Now you can have them buy a house. That makes sense to me, right? Yes. And like you just said, when you put your proposal together and they ask you about all your general and administrative costs and you building these costs out, not one time ever have a homeowner say, hey, give me your gas price. Give me your time on a computer. Let me formulate that into your commission. You can't do that with everyday real estate, but you can do it in the government space. You're able to take all of your costs and combine it. And that's what makes your RFP. So mm -hmm. it, it's just a beautiful word. Taking what we're doing already, brokers, and putting it on steroids. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, we had someone was saying there are a couple of questions in here. Um, uh, can you explain uh, what you said about not being allowed to be a broker and what we need to make sure in our taxes, Ms. Paula? Um, meaning broker, part of the 8A program, they don't, they consider you as a third party. So on your tax return, most people don't even pay attention to that. In the corner, you're going to see a code, a six-digit code. Those codes are called NAICS codes, N-A-I-C-S. 
there is a broker code associated in that industry. The code that you all should use. Did you use the 541611 code or the facility support code, Breezy? Only after taking your class and I got denied the first time. Not knowing <laughs> what you just said. So people say they don't learn certain things, even in that you care now. We'll say somebody having to submit an 8 application twice. The first mm -hmm. time I submitted 531210 for a real estate broker. They did not mean say we do not, even though they have the NAICS code on the real estate, they do not give real estate brokers the 8A. So it took about three years later and I did the management and consulting one. And I had someone who said they were able to, and I love their approach, um, because they had were working on the asset management contract with HUD, they were able to go to their contracting officer mm -hmm. and have the contracting officer say, yes, we have uh, awards, uh, uh, contracts through this program that um, justify them accepting them into the A-Day program. So there's various ways to get around everything. But again, my goal is you want to go in broad. <laughs> you want to be a manager because that's what you're doing in real estate. If I can transfer those skills in this space, it's project management. You all are the glue to make sure the deal comes through. Um, Breezy, have you ever had the opportunity, because I'm fascinated with business and government and contracts. I see a lot of opportunities uh, and leasing agreements that come out of GSA, General Services Administration. They manage all of the federal properties um, and leases. So have you been able to look in there and figure out that little sweet spot, which I think it is a sweet spot. I think it is a sweet spot too, but I noticed they give it to a lot of bigger commercial broker companies. And maybe if I were on that GSA schedule, I'm not sure how to penetrate it, but they're the largest landlord in the world, as far as, like you said, managing government property. So most real estate brokers, we really should be looking at, you would never go broke if you figure that out. Because <laughs> they all re lease those buildings. I've just not had a chance to figure it out. So maybe that's something the broker community can do here. All of yeah. us can have one of those contracts. Yeah. Absolutely. Collectively pull the resources together uh, and see how that actually works. Because I know when I was at, in Atlanta, um, we had two floors and they were paying almost $20,000 a month yeah. and <laughs> uh, to manage... So I would love for you all to crack that space and figure it out. <laughs> Absolutely. That is exactly right. But this is um, awesome. Any um, other questions? Uh, all right. The code is 541611. Um, people are always concerned about people and, and, and they're, they're getting into this space and always trying to base it on their experience. What I tell people, your experience is your experience. You may not say, I don't have any government experience, but all the experience and jobs that you've worked on, those be that becomes your past, past performance and demonstrating to the government, yes, I've worked on this type of project, I've worked on that type of project. And that's what makes sense to me. Yes. Um, um, anybody else have any questions that we want to open up? The young lady asks, how do you find high value people like Marcia Toms to work with? I'll answer that question for me, but it may not be the real answer for everyone else. Marcia Toms, in the process of me trying to get um, listings, I've always gone to a lot of real estate conferences over the years. And I would see Marcia out there because she worked with one of the companies where we used to try to get these hood listings from but you just couldn't get to her like that because everybody was trying to get to her like that and literally one night i'm sitting at my computer after i win the usda contract i knew of marcia but i did not know marcia and mm -hmm. i kid you not i'm a believer marcia just like that crossed my mind so young lady Michelle, that's how I found Marcia Tums. The Holy Spirit whispered her name to me. I don't know how you would find other high value people, but that's just my answer, how I found Marcia. I knew her in passing, but God whispered her name. That's who I needed on this contract with me. And, and, 
And you, you speak a lot of your belief and your crying. And that's why I say everyone don't understand what it takes to get to where you are. What it took, because she started with me in GPI at um, New Birth, right? Uh, New Birth Church, and how <laughs> and, long ago was that? That has been seven years. So it's been seven years since I left um, New Birth. I mean, left SBA. And I took a, a leap of faith myself. Um, and if you're in business, you have to have you have to have some type of spiritual grounding. Um, because there is going to be a lot of days that's a roller coaster, but I would not trade it for any thing in the world. I love what I do. I love creating millionaires because I know Breezy. What, what did you say? You were the first in your family. Yes, now, family. just think yeah. about your future. Yes. Your future. You're, you're setting the future up. Yes. And that's what I'm about is creating things that's going to be lasting and sustainable. Um, I, I'm always encouraging all my 8A and, and small businesses. SBA now has the All Small Mentor Protege Program. Um, but you need to date. Understand how to leverage those these programs. That's another way to put your business on steroids. In that program, it allows a large business. And maybe that might be a strategy, Breezy, as I'm talking about this. Um, connect with one of those large brokers, right? That are giving those, um, that are leasing those properties as a potential mentor. Mm. And what that does is eliminate their small business state status, but you're also now allowing the government to get a check mark for small business, woman-owned, 8A. <laughs> And now you're able to capitalize on that large broker's company to take over. It's just not uh, U.S., it's worldwide. Why not? You're right. That's a great strategy, Ms. Paula. You like that? I do. I love that. <laughs> yes. And uh, an, an, another first, um, the USDA contract that we got, we're the first, the first time that they've ever given an asset management contract out. And we're the first Ooh. minority owned. So a lot mm. of people who sold USDA properties, it was through some type of interagency, meaning that um, one asset management company sold VA properties. So they just asked them, hey, since you're selling these, can you sell ours? But it was not through a contract that was awarded. It was just through an interagency agreement. So once we found that out, we were like, oh my God, this is so mm. big. And I, this continues to blow my mind, but with God, I know a lot of people hate when I probably hate it, but I will forever scream his name from the rooftop. He did this, not LaBrizia. Yes, yes, yes. And Breezy, you all, you deserve it. It's not just, um, you've worked hard yeah. and you've yeah. always had that kind, gentle um, spirit. I love your spirit. Always upbeat, yeah. always trying to help others along this journey. And that's what it is about for me. Um, each one teach one. So we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna go ahead and close out today's session. I thank you um, Breezy for taking the time out and, and giving back because to me, it's all about each one teach one. And there's no reason it's 113 people. You can't go after a $400 million contract. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but it's understanding how to collaborate, how to partner. Um, just to reiterate, um, tomorrow I will be in uh, doing a live presentation in Stonecrest, Georgia, at the New Black Wall Street mar uh, Market. Um, I'll also be doing a live, uh, hold on, live session tomorrow morning that's going to go into more details about our program and how you can join and become a part of the GPI community. As I say, I love creating millionaires. I know we are going to change the future. So thank you guys for taking the time out. Um, I look forward to you all joining and becoming a part of the community. Yes. Thank you again, Labricia. Thank you, Ms. Paula.
All and, right. Uh, Loved it. Know, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Miss Breezy. Bye. <laughs>